Hey everyone, I'm Adam Wolf Gordon. I'm a senior engineer at DigitalOcean, where I work as the tech lead for our Kubernetes and container registry products. Today in 2021, there are more ways than ever to deploy your software. And Kubernetes might be the biggest buzzword of the moment in the industry, but buzzwords are just buzzwords. And Kubernetes really isn't right for every business or every project at every stage of its existence. So today I wanted to spend some time talking about the different platforms that DigitalOcean offers for deploying software. And I'll talk about some of the things you should consider when you're choosing one of those platforms, as well as some signs that as you scale and grow, it might be time to reconsider and choose a different one. So when I say deployment platform, what I'm talking about is a place that you can run your code. And DigitalOcean really offers three very different deployment platforms, Droplets, App Platform, and DigitalOcean Kubernetes, or DOKS. So I'm going to give a high level overview of each of those before we talk about the things you might want to consider when you're choosing one. Droplets, first of all, are DigitalOcean's original product. These are virtual machines, they run Linux, and they're available in a wide variety of different CPU and memory configurations. They all have fast SSD or NVMe storage on them. Droplets are completely self-managed. So that means anything you want to run on them, you have to uh, install and manage and operate yourself. That means you can do anything you want with droplets. They can really run any software you like in any configuration. And DO provides a bunch of tools like load balancers and firewalls and block storage volumes that work with droplets so you can build things on top of them. App Platform is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of abstraction. It's a fully managed container platform. It's built on top of Kubernetes and other open products. And that means you don't see any of the details of the infrastructure. All you really worry about in App Platform is your code and how it runs. You don't even need to worry about building and deploying your code with that platform. That's automated for you. DOKS, the product that I work on the most, is kind of a middle ground in terms of abstraction. It's fully managed Kubernetes, and you can put whatever you want on top of it. One of our goals with DOKS is that it's what I like to call vanilla Kubernetes. Just the Kubernetes infrastructure is managed for you and automated. And we keep everything as close to upstream community-supported Kubernetes as possible. So anything that works on Kubernetes will work here. DOKS has simple integration with our container registry and with block storage and load balancers and firewalls. And it uses native Kubernetes mechanisms for that whenever possible. So it makes it easy to build things on top of it. So now that we've seen a, a brief overview of each of these platforms, let's talk about the trade-offs you might consider when you're choosing where to run your code. When you're thinking about where you want to deploy your code, droplets have a couple of big advantages. First of all, they're a familiar environment for a lot of developers. You can use all the Linux tools that you already know. There's not much of a learning curve to get started there. If you're already comfortable with Linux and you're used to developing on it, then droplets might be the fastest way to get your business off the ground and just start running things. Another big advantage of droplets is that they're super flexible. You're not constrained by any abstraction layers. You can install anything you want, and you really can build anything you want on top of droplets. You have full control. The downside of not having any abstractions in your way is that you don't have any abstractions to help you either. So you have to install anything that you might need. You have to manage it and upgrade it and do all the operational work of running software on top of droplets. Droplets don't have any built-in tooling to help you with that other than what comes with your Linux distribution of choice. So let's make this a little bit more concrete with a real example. Let's say you're building an application with Rails. Uh, a really simple initial deployment would be to create a droplet and run your Rails application there. You need a database for Rails, so maybe you would use DigitalOcean Managed MySQL, so you don't have to worry about operating the database yourself. Now you need to get traffic into your Rails app, and a common way to do that would be with Nginx. You can add it to the same droplet, your users are going to connect, they're going to hit Nginx, it's going to forward your traffic to your Rails app. And we have tutorials on the DigitalOcean website for uh, configuring this kind of basic stack. It's a really great, simple way to get started. As your business scales, your one droplet running your Rails app isn't going to be sufficient anymore. You need your app to keep working if your droplet goes down. And you might also have more traffic than your one droplet can handle if all goes well. So let's say you deploy two more. You've got the same stack. Now you just have three replicas of it. You can still use your managed MySQL database. That part doesn't change at all. What does change a little bit is now you're going to need a load balancer to get traffic into it. Uh, our, autom our managed load balancers do health checks. They automatically distribute traffic. It's a really helpful tool to help you, again, build on top of droplets. And there's nothing wrong with this deployment. It'll perform well. It'll be stable. You can run your business in this configuration. Lots of people do that. 
But as you start to scale further, and let's say you add more components, like you add a sidekick worker and a Redis database to back, to back it, uh, you're going to start seeing the limitations of Droplets as a deployment platform. That's because you're going to start needing to build automation for deploying your stack. You might use tools like Terraform to create the infrastructure and Ansible to deploy and configure your software. And remember, we said we were going to start with Droplets because they're familiar. It's a simple environment. You already know how to use it. There's no learning curve. But now that we're adding automation, there's new tools you need to learn. And you're building your own automation for yourself on top of these existing tools. So at this point, you might want to consider a platform that does some of that automation for you, like App Platform. So again, there are trade-offs to any tool. That definitely includes App Platform. Some big advantages of App Platform are that it solves a lot of the problems we just talked about. It is fully managed. You bring your code or you bring your containers, and App Platform is going to build them, run them, get traffic to them. And it can manage things like databases for you as well. It's scalable, so you can scale up or down, in or out at any time really easily. And I like to call it batteries included, uh, things we didn't even talk about with the droplet-based deployment, like logging and metrics and those operational concerns that you have on, the, on day two. That's taken care of for you with App Platform. The downside is you do lose some flexibility. App Platform is opinionated. At, we at DigitalOcean have chosen the tools that it uses and the features that it offers. And if we don't offer a feature that you need, you can request it, but you'll just have to wait till we implement it. It's also not totally portable. So App Platform, like I said, is built on top of open standards. We use Kubernetes and build packs and Cilium and Istio and all these great open things. But at the end of the day, the deployment configuration for your App Platform app is DigitalOcean specific. And you can't easily take that to another provider or another platform. If you want to do multi-cloud or hybrid cloud at some point, you're going to have to configure your other deployment platforms differently. So let's revisit our Rails example. In an app platform deployment, we actually start with the source code, your code in a GitHub or a GitLab repository. So you've got your Rails app code in there, the code for your sidekick workers, any static assets you need for your web component of your app. And after a little bit of configuration in our control panel or via config file, that automatically gets built and deployed into App Platform, which again runs on top of Kubernetes. But you don't have to worry about the fact that it's Kubernetes. You don't need to know exactly where or how your app runs. App Platform abstracts all of that away from you, which is its power. You tell it how many replicas you want, how much CPU and RAM your app needs, and it's going to take care of that scaling for you. It can also manage your uh, managed databases for you. So your managed Redis, your managed MySQL, that's taken care of. And it's going to provide the connection strings into your app so you don't have to manage secrets and configure them yourself. That's taken care of. App Platform also sets up ingress, so you don't have to manually configure a load balancer. And it sets things up that we didn't talk about before, like DNS and TLS certificates and DDoS protection and CDN for your static assets, all these great tools, things that you would have to configure yourself if you were still building on top of droplets. Plus, again, you get monitoring, you get logs and metrics available in the DO control panel without doing any extra work. So this is a they're all kind of all in one solution. Now, let's say we make a change to our app. Instead of using Sidekick, now we want to do some background processing written in Go. And we're going to use a Kafka queue to send work from our Rails app to our background processing app. DigitalOcean doesn't currently offer managed Kafka, so you're going to have to run Kafka yourself. And Kafka needs some persistent storage, so you might use a block storage volume. Now, App Platform doesn't currently support block storage volumes. This is a limitation of App Platform. In fact, App Platform doesn't have any persistent storage uh, attached to it. So for example, you might need to run Kafka on a droplet with block storage attached, in addition to your App Platform app. And this is where you run into these limitations of App Platform. It is opinionated. It offers a limited set of features. And it's really optimized for certain kinds of applications. Once you start getting outside of those use cases and outside of those features, you might need to consider a different platform. So that kind of brings us back to the title of this talk, is Kubernetes right for me? If you want some of the abstractions of App Platform, but you have needs that it doesn't handle, you need more control or you need more features, then Kubernetes might very well be right for you. Kubernetes makes it easier to run your applications. It handles things like replicating them across multiple nodes, scaling them up or out for you, and automatically provisioning things like block storage and load balancers and other resources. And the big advantage of DigitalOcean Kubernetes is that it is managed. You don't have to know how to build and operate and maintain a Kubernetes cluster, which is a lot of work. We do that for you with our automation. But you still have the full flexibility of Kubernetes. You can run anything that runs on top of Kubernetes, which these days is pretty much anything. 
And there are all kinds of great tools and projects and tutorials uh, in the Kubernetes community. Kubernetes has a huge community around it to really help you get started, help you run your software on top of it. You get scalability as well. You can create a cluster of up to 512 nodes. You can use any of our droplet plans you want for those nodes. You can even use auto scaling to automatically scale your cluster up when you need it. The downside of using Kubernetes is that it is enormously complex. One of our top goals for DigitalOcean Kubernetes is to make it as simple as possible, but as simple as possible for Kubernetes is still really complex. There's a lot that you need to learn. There definitely is a learning curve to effectively use Kubernetes and understand how your app is going to run in it. So let's revisit our Rails app one more time. To start with on Kubernetes, we get a cluster. And in this case, I've drawn a cluster with three nodes because that fits nicely on the slide. But remember, it could be any number of nodes. And you can choose any of our droplet plans for those nodes. We can deploy a couple of replicas of our Rails app into the cluster. And maybe later, we would use auto scaling to add replicas when it gets busy. But let's start off simple, say two replicas. We can also deploy our Go background processor and that Kafka queue that we talked about. And in real life, you would want to have multiple Kafka replicas. And there's good open source tools called operators for managing stateful workloads like Kafka on top of Kubernetes. Remember, I said this is one of the advantages of Kubernetes is there's all these tools for working with it. Kafka has a block storage volume. And again, Kubernetes will automatically provision and manage that for us. So that's a, another helpful bit of automation. And finally, we can deploy an Nginx ingress to route traffic to our application. There's tools for this called ingress controllers. So you don't have to figure it out all yourself. And Kubernetes will automatically create a DigitalOcean load balancer to sit in front of those. As your cluster scales or those Nginx instances move around to different nodes, that LB is automatically going to get updated. So you don't have to build that automation yourself or do it manually. This is really the power of Kubernetes. It lets us deploy essentially arbitrary things. There's tons of tools for working with it. And it provides these powerful abstractions for automating deployment and management of your applications. But we do have to set up a lot more here than we did with that platform. There's a lot more learning curve, a lot more to understand. One additional nice property of Kubernetes is that this configuration basically uses standard open Kubernetes concepts. So with some minor tweaks to the details, you can deploy the exact same deployment manifests to DigitalOcean Kubernetes and to another Kubernetes platform. You can even manage your own Kubernetes at some point if you want to. And what this does is lets you optimize. It lets you optimize for resiliency or for cost or for control. If you just want to have full control over how your Kubernetes cluster runs, at some point you can do that and you're not locked into DigitalOcean Kubernetes. You can move it uh, or run it in multiple places later when you need to. Now, Kubernetes is super flexible, it's scalable, and as long as you can stomach that complexity that I talked about, it's great for a lot of things. But I don't want to make it sound like it's perfect. Uh, it's definitely not magic. Uh, there are limitations to it. So one limitation that you might hit with DigitalOcean Kubernetes is storage. Remember, in our Rails setup, we talked about running Kafka in the cluster with its data on a block storage volume. And this is fine. Kubernetes will help you automate that. But if your Kafka gets super busy, you might start hitting performance limitations of block storage because block storage isn't local to the nodes. It is externally attached. So you might think, well, my worker nodes are droplets and droplets have super fast storage. They've got SSDs or NVMe storage. I'll just use the local storage on my worker nodes for Kafka. And that's a great idea at first. It is super fast, but there's a big gotcha. The general philosophy of Kubernetes is that nodes are livestock, not pets. This means they're sort of disposable. They're not going to randomly go away. We won't just delete your nodes on you. But if a worker node has a problem, we're going to replace it with a new one, not manually try and fix it. And in DigitalOcean Kubernetes, this is also how we do cluster upgrades. So when you upgrade to a new version of Kubernetes in DOKS, uh, to ensure that every node is in a known good state when we install the new version, we're going to replace all those nodes with a node running the new version. Since the worker node's local storage is local to the droplet, the node, when the node gets replaced, that data is gone. So for this reason, we recommend that you treat the local storage on the worker nodes as ephemeral. Uh, don't put your critical data or like database or Kafka or anything really important on it. So if you have a workload like this, where you need super fast IO performance that block storage can't provide, and the data you're writing is critical, you need durability for it. That's a scenario where you might want to use droplets and build your own tooling around them. And that would be a great way to manage your Kafka cluster. So now that we've talked about these different platforms and some of their features, some of their limitations, here's my overall advice for choosing which one is best for you. 
first off, like we talked about, Kubernetes has a lot of inherent complexity. If you're already comfortable with it, you already live in the Kubernetes world, then that's great and you can definitely use it. But if you're not there, uh, Kubernetes can be a really steep learning curve. So you might want to consider app platform or droplets to start with just because they are simpler. I would actually say as someone who works with Kubernetes every day, even if you are comfortable with it, you might want to consider app platform when you're starting out. Like we talked about, it abstracts away a lot of the Kubernetes concerns, a lot of that complexity. And as long as your app fits well in app platform, and it is pretty flexible uh, up to a point, that tie is going to save you time and effort at the beginning. Plus app platform does use Kubernetes under the hood. So if your app runs on app platform, it will run on Kubernetes with a bit of configuration. And you can always make that move later if you find that you need more, more power, more features, more control. If you start with droplets, you might want to consider switching when you find yourself building automation. Um, both app platform and Kubernetes have lots of built-in tools for scaling, for automating deployment and management of things. So don't build that yourself on top of droplets. Uh, take the, the tools that are already built for you. And unless you really need to, you have a specific use case, uh, use automation that's already there, like Kubernetes or like app platform. If you start out with App Platform, you might want to consider Kubernetes when you start to hit its limitations, specifically if you need more flexibility in terms of features that App Platform doesn't offer, like storage, or if you need finer grain control over resources or performance, if you want to know exactly what type of node your application is running on and have some performance guarantees, then App Platform uh, doesn't quite provide that, and you might want the finer grain control of Kubernetes. Finally, like we just talked about, if you need super fast data storage for uh, critical applications, then droplets really are the way to go. It's the only platform we provide that has that uh, really fast durable storage attached to it. So finally, before we wrap up, three big takeaways that I want you to get from this talk. Number one, you can build a successful business on top of any of our platforms. We have customers running great businesses on all of them. They're all great. They all have great features. They also have limitations. If you have time to experiment, give all three of these platforms a try. Build a proof of concept on them. See what works best for you. You'll learn way more about the features and discover more of the limitations and how they apply to your situation by actually trying them than you will from this talk or from the documentation or anything else. Finally, you need to choose the deployment platform that works best for you and your business. I always say every technical decision we make is a trade-off. And a big part of my job as a tech lead for a team is making sure that my team makes the right set of trade-offs for our software and our products. That's the same for you when you're building a business on top of DigitalOcean. You need to make the right set of trade-offs and choose the platform that's best for your situation. That's all for today. Um, I think we've got a couple of minutes for questions and I'll try and address a couple of the ones that are in the chat. But afterwards, uh, please do find me on the Discord channel and we'll be uh, happy to chat a little bit more. So we've got one minute. Um, so an interesting one is, um, how do you manage HA within App Platform? So if you configure multiple replicas for App Platform, it's going to manage HA for you, essentially. Um, if your app needs to do something like leader election, it'll have to do that itself. But in terms of just the basics of HA, distributing multiple replicas across multiple uh, independent pieces of hardware, uh, App Platform is going to do that for you. Uh, Kubernetes will do that for you too. Uh, with Kubernetes, you might need to set some annotations on it to uh, ensure that you have um, them running on different nodes. But App Platform will, will sort of take care of that for you. That's one of the details that it abstracts away. And um, yeah, I, I think that's, I think we're probably right at time. So I uh, definitely look forward to chatting more on Discord and thank you all very much for coming to the talk.